Hi, it's Gadget UK here again. This is the one, uh, it's been on my channel a few times this. It was one of the first repairs of the A500 series. There wasn't much wrong with the board. Uh, and then when it came to do the A590 stuff, we had a uh, big problem with this board. Uh, well, a few problems. Um, we fixed the filter and stuff, but I couldn't help but wonder if there was something else going on because we had the really crazy behaviour with the uh, power supplies there and the, uh, some chips on the A590 going uh, nuclear in temperature. Uh, anyway, coming back to this, I tested this uh, for a few weeks, no issues, no problems, no repeats of the power issue was, I was having with those chips frying. Um, but I noticed a sound problem that would start after this thing warmed up, uh, you know, after it had been on for a few hours, you start getting crackly sound from the right hand channel on the TV. So I did all the usual things that you would do, like measure the voltages, make sure nothing's getting warm, uh, swap Paula just to rule out the, the audio problem at source, uh, and run diagnostics on it, and everything kind of checked out, no problems with Paula. So the op amp uh, was previously socketed up by me, I didn't cover that, as part of the A590 stuff when I did the filter fix and stuff on here, while I was waiting for the 1488, I removed the, uh, the filter components at the back there, uh, like these here, can you see those? It's like a capacitor, an inductor in a single package. And I removed those to do with the 12 volt, the minus 12 volt. I removed these ones. I removed the transistors. Uh, I removed the filter transistor. I removed the op amp. I measured each of these components here. I removed the caps and measured those because we were getting really crazy issues. And I was trying to rule out something going on with the plus 12 or minus 12 in relation to the audio. Uh, anyway, long story short, here we are now where when this warms up, it starts to glitch out. Now, the first thing I've just noticed, if I just uh, switch this on, and I'll uh, pull the multimeter here so you can see it. Hang on. And if I just measure from a ground on the board, say down here, to these points up here on these inductors, you can see that this is the right hand channel 3.16 volts is going up, 3.17, that's the bias that probe there. 2.4 volts, that's about right for the bias. So my first issue here now, while it's cold and it's not glitching out, but we do have an issue, you can see the voltage changed a bit there, it's gone down to 3.19 now. There's something wrong with the bias on one channel. So I can't see what it could be, I've measured the resistors here that go in the feedback loop, I've uh, measured the voltages on these transistors here, I see the same thing we're seeing here, So uh, and it's, it looks to be on the base of the transistor. Um, so the next thing I thought is let's remove the op-amp and see if it's the feedback loop that is uh, influencing that actually. So let's just do that, I'll power it off and we'll try and lift the op-amp up here. It's not a very good fit, I've ordered a new op-amp anyway actually. The reason it's not a very good fit is because the pins were cut short by Commodore, can you see that? They were cut super short, one or two of them are very short indeed, the ones in the middle here. Anyway, let's move that out, we'll power it back on. So it's got no op-amp. I'd just be curious to see, do we see any reduction there in uh, those bias levels? Look at that, we do. They're both the same now, 0 0.2, 0 0.2. So it would seem that maybe it's just as simple as the op-amp. It really could be that simple. Uh, and that has a relation, I think, that has a relation to the, uh, the filter. So maybe that's what killed the filter originally. Maybe this op-amp started to fail and then the filter died, I don't know. Or maybe the filter died and caused the op-amp to uh, have its issue it's currently got. So testing there, no distortion, because clearly it's not warmed up enough. So you can just about see the voltage there. Let's just measure those two test pads again. So you can see, yeah, the right channel's still high. Three point five. Maybe it's going up. When it goes up to a certain point, maybe that's when it starts to distort. Anyway, the left channel's all right. Yeah, can you see it's just gradually creeping? It just went three five nine there. Three five seven looks going up. Three five eight. Three five seven. So it may start glitching soon. At least you'll be able to get an example of how it's distorting. I was a bit concerned it might be Paula. Um, because you'll know, if you watch the A590 video, I'll stick a link to that up there. Crazy things were happening with this board, actually. And uh, there was a risk, I was putting it at risk. Some people said, why didn't you measure the voltages when the RAM was on the A590? It was getting super, super hot. Now, I did leave it connected to the, the meter like this for a period of time. It didn't do it. I spent that, that video was filmed over about a month. I spent a month 
on and off trying to get to the bottom of that problem. I said it happened when you connected the floppy drive, but it did. But then what would happen is you'd let it all cool down and then it would work alright with the floppy drive. So the floppy drive wasn't really the issue. I think all that was happening there is the sequence of events. It was like me testing it for a period of time, an hour or two, everything's fine, switch it off. You connect the floppy drive, switch it on. It's that sequence of events of switching one side off, leaving one thing powered, I think was ultimately the issue. Now you may say it's a good practice to switch them both off and on at the same time and that's exactly what we came to the conclusion of at the end of that video. But anyway, my point being, sorry all that waffle there, point being is we had some power issues so I couldn't help but wonder if it's, you know, that's what's caused the damage here. Maybe something else will go wrong with this board yet. Uh, I don't know, I don't think so, I think it's the legs being short on that and... Uh, look at that 3.8, it is going up. It is going up. It's not getting warm. But it just seems over time that voltage there, look at that 3.9 volts now, nearly 4 volts, it is gradually climbing and of course the more it climbs you will get to the point where it will start to distort because you, you, your audio, your bias on your audio is shifting your audio level up, you'll start to clip off uh, one side or the other. Well, I'm curious as to how high that will go, it's going 4 volts now look. Because this is I think is supplied, let's just test that, supplied with plus 12 and minus 12. Yeah, look, minus 12 on one side. I don't know you can see that for the reflection. Um, let me just see if it can balance the meter. Hang on. It's starting to distort now. So that, minus 12. And plus 12. So the supplies there are okay. Let's just check that again. Yeah, look at that, 4.2 volts. Starting to clip. Hopefully you can see that. So let's leave that a few more minutes, and it's still climbing, 4.8 volts. If you just listen to this now when I enable the second channel, can you hear that? That's the filter or something being a problem, it's clipping, makes the tone sound different. So yeah, anyway, at least you've seen the behaviour, so we'll wait for that op amp to come swap it over see if that solves it there is a chance it's not the op amp but you saw when we removed the op amp the, 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 the voltage levels were completely different there um, and actually i could measure the bias at its source and the bias is correct so you've only got one bias that goes to that chip so it's uh it's a little strange to say the least it's got to be that chip so something else interesting I've uh, discovered, consider this uh, second repair, two for the price of one again. Um, this is not doing a keyboard reset. The keyboard works fine. It's a keyboard I repaired in a previous video actually that you may not have seen yet because I don't think I've uploaded it. But if I control Amiga Amiga, it doesn't reset. As you can see, it's just sat there. But the keyboard MCU does reset when you do that, in SysTest at least, in a SysCheck, because you can see the caps lock go off and on. So. I'm looking at Q1 here, I don't know if you can see, there's like a, a black blob on the emitter pin and it looks like it's joined to the sensor pin. The other thing that's a bit mysterious about this, I think this is an early keyboard, it's a Samsung one, it's got the red power LED there, um, but is this one from a 2000 maybe? Maybe it's already had a mod done to it so that it doesn't uh, do the reset the same way, you know, via a signal coming out here. It's got an alternative cable, I'm going to replace this with the one I'm going to take from another keyboard that I'm going to house in another video. Sorry, I'm waffling a lot here. Uh, anyway, let's uh, just inspect there with a magnification and I'm just going to see if those two pins are maybe joined or something. Now they aren't joined. If you look in the middle, can you see the pin, uh, the middle pin goes to connection on the back? But just look at that horrible blob there. It's like corrosion. So maybe, so maybe it's a bit of corrosion where it joins the trace here. I think I'm just going to remove that transistor and clean up the pads there. Just do some connectivity tests and then refit it. See if that fixes the reset issue. So I've removed that transistor. Let's uh, just have a bit of a clean there. Look, some brown stuff. Look, come off there. Just a bit of dirt, I think. So yeah, the connections there look all right. We'll test that transistor as well. I'll just get my uh, transistor tester out. So this should tell us whether it's uh, NPN or PNP, and uh, well, hopefully whether it's working or not. Switch it on. NPN. Yeah, base emitter collector. Current gain HFE 198. Test current 2.5 milliamps. 
then to collect a base in mid cert voltage 0.76 test current 4.46 milliamp leakage current 0.00 so there's nothing wrong with that transistor so I refitted that transistor after we cleaned up there it's powered on you can see kickstart 3.1 there fire press control Amiga Amiga and it's rebooted so it would appear it was that dirt I mean it did look a little bit dirty and corroded you know maybe there was a bit of corrosion there if there was a short between I don't know the emitter and the collector or the base and the collector that would explain it let's just try it again just for good luck yeah that's working but uh, trust me I tried an awful lot with this keyboard trying to get it to reset and it wouldn't reset from the keyboard that way and the keyboard was okay that's the other point here that I ran the assist test and the keyboard was fine so finally I'll fix the replacement op amp, you can see it's uh, an LF347, that isn't the chip that was originally in this, uh, it's an equivalent to two. Uh, some boards have the LF chip, some have the other, I'll show you the part number in a minute, so yeah, pin one is up this side here, and I was wearing the ESD wrist strap while we did that. So I tested for a number of hours and it's perfect. If you want to measure these uh, bias uh, levels here on uh, another a500 board because you might have these little uh, filter components here like this with these two test pads uh, if I just measure from the right hand one there the second pin down on this side so pin one is up here and if you go all the way around and not the bottom one but the, the next one up on the right hand side there that's a dead short so you can measure voltage there uh, and the other one is the second one down from the top here you know one lowest its maximum pin so a quick look at the schematics, so Paula 8364, you can see here we've got right and left channels out. And those go into the op amps here, you've got your left channel going in there, and your right channel going in there. The pins that we were measuring that voltage on, where I kept mentioning the BIOS, because it was being affected by uh, the BIOS, but it was also going beyond the BIOS level. Uh, you know, it was climbing up, it should, should show when it's idle, at BIOS level, approximately. And then with activity, you'll see just very small changes there. What we're getting some sort of DC offset developing across the feedback loop here. That's pin 13, I think. Yeah, and that one's pin 9. It's the negative side of the input to these op amps here. And you can see in both cases it ties into the feedback loop. You know, you've got output comes round and back round there. You have a food feedback loop there on both of those. So, you know, anywhere along here, this is where we're seeing that DC offset climb right up to about 7 volts ish. And here's a close up on that one channel, you can better see the feedback loop there for that particular one. Uh, this is the one for the left channel actually. And you can see the part number there, LF347 slash, is it a TL SO4 or something? It's TL something 04. I can't see it from here, I'll zoom in so you can see it. But having used this for prolonged periods of time here now, I can show you. If we look at one channel there, you see that? Pretty much spot on, 2.4 volts. And the other channel, Again, spot on. It's a little bit lower. I have noticed a difference between the two channels here, but it's very subtle. And they hold stable. What was happening before, this would go up and up and up. It got, went as high as about 7 or 8 volts at one point. So, uh, yeah, that was the op amp. Very interesting. So we do hope you found that short video interesting. If you would like to support the channel, please see the Coffee and Patreon links down below. Uh, thank you very much. I'll catch you in the next video.